Welcome to the town board meeting on Thursday, December 14th. Please rise and salute the flag. Emergency exits are to my right, behind the town clerk, and also the door you came in. Roll, please. Councilman Morris? Here. Councilman Gutierrez? Here. Councilwoman Doyle? Here. Supervisor Perotti? Here. And let the record reflect that Councilman Delango is absent. Supervisor's report. Um, I wanted to um, give an explanation of what's happening with the uh, assessor. Um, the ballot initiative to change to appointed assessor failed from 64% to 36%. There were 13 write-in votes for, uh, for the elected assessor. Six were for Wayne Uvrard, one for Ralph Venturello, and the rest were void or scattered. Wayne Uvrard does not want the office of assessor and will file an oath of office and immediately resign by means of a letter effective January 1st, 2018. According to the Board of Election rules, the office does not automatically go to the second write-in on the ballot. The Board of Elections is stating that according to general municipal, <coughs> excuse me, general municipal law, the assessor has to be a voter in the town of Amenia. However, according to the Education Department at the State Real Property Office, an assessor, whether or not it is elected office or appointed, has to meet educational requirements such as certification. The issue has been turned over to the town attorney, Dave Everett, who will investigate this issue and let us know whether general municipal law or real property law takes precedent so we know what to do next. <clears throat> I was invited by Governor Cuomo's office to attend the New York Regional Economic Development Council Awards and to represent the Mid-Hudson region. Unfortunately, the town of Amenia did not receive the $350,000 Main Street Award, but we will continue to look for ways to revitalize Amenia's downtown area. There will be no meeting on December 21st. The next scheduled town board meeting will be the reorganization meeting at 6 p.m. on January 4, 2018. During this holiday season, please remember to shop locally and gift cards to local restaurants are sure to be welcome. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Town Clerk Report. Good evening. The local share has been remitted to the supervisor in the amount of $779.25. The minutes of November 16 and November 20th were circulated oh, back in November. Uh, has the board had the opportunity to read those minutes? Yes. Yes. Make a motion to accept the minutes as presented for Thursday, November 16th and Monday, November 20th. Second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Uh, on November 28th, the Town Clerk's Office uh, has received a letter of resignation from Tara Mori as the position of typist. I'll make a motion that we accept with, resi uh, with uh, regrets uh, Tara's resignation uh, as typist. Effective. January 3rd, 2018. Second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? I make a motion to authorize the town clerk to advertise for the position of typist, 20 hour position at 1545 an hour. And just before um, we get a second on that, you were voting yes on the last? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a second on her motion? Yes. Jim? Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. 
Um, I'm also in receipt of a request from the Amenia Island Cemetery Association. They would like to use space here at the Amenia Town Hall on January 10th at 6 p.m. Um, to hold a meeting. Um, and I, and I'm, at this time, I'm seeking the waiver of the building use fee and insurance. I'll make a motion that we waive the insurance and the fee. Thank you. Second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Also, I'm in receipt of Jeannie Swagger's um, letter of interest to remain on the Ethics Committee. And we've received no other? We've received no other uh, letters of interest. I'll make a motion that we um, reappoint Jean Thornton Schwager uh, to the Ethics Committee. And it's a five-year term. For a five-year term. Thank you. Second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prody? Yes. I also present to the board payment of claims dated well, it should be dated December uh, 2017. Our general fund $107,168.35. Highway fund $57,649.84. Amenia lighting $1,621. Wasake lighting $559.88. I mean, your water, $21,592.76 for a total this month of $188,751.04. Make a motion that we authorize the payment of these claims. Second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prody? Yes. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update with the new year coming and um, the constant advertising and circulation of volunteers, specifically for our Recreation Commission. Um, I know this past year we cleared up the terms of all of the members um, so it was clear and everybody understood what their terms were. But in part of that research, one of the items that I found was there used to be two board members as part of the count on this commission. And then I know things were extremely busy and then that must have been how they increased their, their um, 2002 it had included the two board members and then in 2005 um, it increased to seven members excluding the board members. Um, we do have an open position um, and we've We've had it for a little bit, and then I do know mm -hmm. that um, with the recent election results, we're going to be having another open position. Michelle's going to have to resign. And, you know, I share that information with the board to give you the history, how it, it was five and then it went to seven. Um, it seems that we've been having a constant struggle filling this board with seven members. So I don't know if you would like to have the discussion of maybe going back to a five-member commission in lieu of yeah, we would be able to do that at the reorganization meeting if, if everyone's okay with the five members. And then the um, two board members would also be liaisons. So, I mean, I wanted to just, you know, share with everybody and kind of, you know, bring that history back um, so that we, for reorg we can be ready to move with that action. Okay, we'll make that part of the reorganization then to change it from seven to five or back to <laughs> what it was originally. Back to five. And then um, I just want to <clears throat> remind everybody that uh, at one of the open projects that we have in the town clerk's office is the water engineering um, RFPs. I have been receiving calls from those that submitted their RFPs and, and they're seeking updates to see where the board stands. And I, was, I just wanted to give you that friendly reminder that is an open action of the board. Well, we'll um, I was thinking we'd wait until January when we had all the board members on. And we haven't received, um, uh, if we haven't received anything from John Andrews as far as uh, his recommendations. 
for um, which engineering firm to pick. So we can table that till January. So if anybody needs a refresher or wants to review it, or, you know, I do have them in the clerk's office. Okay. All right. mm -hmm. And uh, with that happy note, I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See you in 2018. Okay, we, uh, the town board um, conducted interviews uh, for Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to reappoint John Medcalf for a term ending on 1231, uh, 2022 on the Zoning Board of Appeals. A second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. I'd also like to make a motion to reappoint John Stephanopoulos to the Planning Board for a term ending 1231-24. A second discussion <clears throat> um, there were two candidates for that position did we want to talk about the pros and cons there or did Bobby withdraw his uh... no he didn't withdraw okay I think we could uh, is there an executive session no. um, seems like we should do that in executive session if we were going to discuss it for John? For the Just, open position. I know, but for, do you want to have an executive session now? Um, uh, so there's one seat available for two candidates, is that correct? Um, actually, there are two seats available. Um, under the New York Public Officers Law Number 3 requires a public officer to be a resident of the town in which he or she serves, which means physically reside in that town. I talked to legal counsel at the Association of Towns. They said by operational law, automatically creates a vacancy. Larissa Delango physically resides at 20 Old Pulse Road North in Red Hook, New York, so has vacated her position on the town board on the planning board, okay. which makes two positions open. Understood. Okay. okay. I, I, was, I was under the impression there was one seat, so hence my question. But okay. I've also received um, a um, application from a candidate who's expressing interest in the chairman position, and that would be Mr. Boyles. So I believe the original motion was to appoint... Reappoint John Stephanopoulos to the planning board for a term ending on 12-31-2024. Right. And I seconded it. And you seconded it. Yeah. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Supervisor mm -hmm. Prodi? In view of the vacancy on the planning board, I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, Bobby Boyles to the vacated term ending 12-31-19. Second. Councilman Morris. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilwoman Doyle. Yes. And Supervisor Prodi. Okay, I, um, since the planning board seat is vacated, the chairmanship is also vacated because of residency, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Bobby Boyle's chairman effective immediately on the planning board. Second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Um, highway Department, there is no report, but I do believe we have a Building Department report. Um, please find November's monthly report for the Building Department as building permits go. We have issued 14 new building permits, totaling 19,000. 
$828.50, along with one renewal of $175. We are continuing with certificate of occupancy searches, and for this month we did eight searches, which total $875, along with one fire inspection of $100, bringing the total for the month to be $20,978.50. And the total year to date is $138,000, 500, $138,533,005. Um, instead of waiting to the end of the meeting, since we already discussed the building report, we were giving under other matters um, a recommendation for changes in the fee schedule for the building department. It's um, not to change all the schedule, all the fees, but some of them that were um, quite high and not in line with the other towns. So in the gray column, is that our current or is that what he's recommending? I believe that's the that's what he's recommending because I know that um, I thought he said there was two he was recommending. So maybe he's done a second spreadsheet that has his current. Uh -oh. Is there a worksheet here? They're both the same. I have two, but they're the same. Well, I don't see the worksheet attached, so we're probably going to have to wait. I don't. Do you see it? I don't. No, he didn't give it to us. Hmm. Well, what we could do is. Um, get the worksheet and then if I don't see where the worksheet is attached so we're not going to be able to yeah. work on that right now. Here are there any committee reports? CAC is not meeting in December, and neither is enhancement to my knowledge. Okay, the next is action is resolution for water operator contract renewal. Marge, you want to come up in case there's any questions? Um, have you all, have you all received the contract? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, looked it over? Okay. So out of respect for other clients that I have in my and uh, for my company too, if you'd like to discuss this in further detail, I just refer to discuss this um, in a private session. If you have any, if you're okay with it, then we'll move forward. Do you want to do I'd that? I'd like to discuss it. In private? Yes. Take, um, We'll have a short executive session. Make a motion that we um, go into executive session. Great. Second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? No. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prodi? Yes.
I'll make a motion that we come uh, out of executive session and return to uh, regular meeting. Second. Council Morris? Yes. Council Gutierrez? Yes. Council Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Party? Yes. Are we ready to vote? Mm. Yep. Resolution number 58. <coughs> What's the number? 58. Approving an agreement between the Town of Amenia and SCBI Environmental Services Incorporated for operation and maintenance, the Town of Amenia Water Facilities. Whereas the town is the owner of certain water district facilities located in the town of Amenia, Dutchess County, New York, known as town of Amenia water district number one, and provides water services to residents of the town of Amenia. Whereas SCBI Environmental Services Incorporated is a full services environmental company which is willing, able, and qualified to provide water and wastewater operations, repair and maintenance, among other things to support the town's needs. Whereas the town and the contractor are desirous of entering into an agreement which sets forth in more detail the scope of services that contractor is to provide the town and the terms pursuant to which contractor will be in re in reimbursed for such services. And whereas the services that contractor is to provide to the town constitute professional services which are exempt from the bidding requirements under general municipal law section 103. Whereas this is a type two action under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, therefore not subject to review under seeker. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board hereby approves a form and terms of agreement between the town of Amenia and contractor for operation and maintenance of the town of Amenia water facilities. Be it further resolved that the town board hereby authorizes the supervisor to execute the said agreement. Need a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And Councilman Doyle is This will be December. Yeah. Um, I usually go through, put all the dates in, and how they vote and all that. Can I call you Monday? Sign. Yeah. Unless you want to just sign just the last page and you're I comfortable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, Marco. Thank you very much. Yes. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Okay, resolution for Stan Whitehead consultant agreement. Uh, I wanted to um, explain what this consultant agreement is for. Uh, we were going to um, hire Stan as a consultant to um, assist the town with the development of a highway garage and work on the Wasaic uh, trail to the train project, which um, he is part of the, uh, his name is on the information that has gone to the DOT as uh, one of the persons who will uh, be overseeing the project. So this is a way he can continue to work for the town and assist in these big projects. Everybody's read it. Okay. Yes. Resolution? Uh -huh. 59. Approving an independent contractor agreement. Whereas the town of Amenia desires to retain an independent contractor to consult the town and provide it with design and development advice, guidance and recommendations on identified projects and proposals, including the Wasaic train to trail project and the potential development of a highway garage. Whereas Stanley Whitehead has the professional expertise necessary to provide such consulting services to the town and is desirous of doing so beginning in January 2018. 
whereas the town and the contractor are desirous of entering into an agreement which sets forth in more detail the independent consulting services the contractor is to provide to the town and the terms pursuant to which contractor will be reimbursed for such services. Whereas the consulting services that contract is to provide to the town constitute professional services which are exempt from the bidding requirements under general municipal law section 103. Whereas this is a type two action under the state environmental quality review act and therefore not subject to review under seeker. Now therefore <clears throat> be it resolved that the town board hereby approves the form and terms of the independent contractor agreement with contractor. Be it further resolved that the town board hereby authorizes the supervisor to execute the said agreement. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. We have a resolution for transfer of funds. <clears throat> Whereas the town board has the authority to transfer funds when necessary or unanticipated to amend the budget. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 67724.01.88 programs for the aging CE senior picnic by $101.29 in decreasing expense 71404.01.091 playgrounds recreation CE Easter egg hunt by $96.29 and decreasing expense line 67724.01.148 programs for the aging CE senior trips by $5 for Dutchess County senior picnic costs. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 801.04.01.048 zoning CE conferences by $12.93 and decreasing expense line 802.04.01.048. Oh, wait a minute, that's is it right? Do we have it in our vouchers? No, I have it. Okay, that's right. Planning and zoning conferences was 048. Okay, that's correct. Mm -hmm. They're both the same, have the same suffix. Just wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. Where is budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 36202.01 safety inspection equipment by $470.23 and decreasing expense line 36204.01.048 safety inspection CE conferences by $470.23 for replacement of out of warranty computer. Whereas budget amendment the general fund increasing expense line 90108.01 state retirement by $2,808.51 and decreasing expense line 90608.01.37, medical insurance town deductible by $2,808.51 for unanticipated retirement costs. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 90608.01, medical insurance town by $699.87, decreasing expense line 90608.01.037, medical insurance, town deductible by $699.87 for unanticipated medical costs. Whereas budget 
Amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 40201.01 Registrar of Vital Statistics PS by $500, decreasing expense line 14104.01040 Town Clerk CE Account Support by $500 for additional cost. Budget amendment in the general fund ex increasing expense line 71504.1.074 Special Rec Facility CE Dance Supplies by $950 and increasing revenue line 3820.01 State Aid Youth Program by $750 and decreasing expense line 71501.01 Special Rec Facilities PS by $200 to cover dance recital costs. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 71104.01 Amenia Park CE by $250 Decreasing expense line 71404.01.089 Amenia Park CE Ballpark by $181.51 and decreasing expense line 71404.01.091 Playgrounds Rec CE Easter Egg Hunt by $68.48. <clears throat> Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 16204.01.054 building CE electrical by $500 and decrease expense line 16202.01.055 building equipment public access by $345 and decrease expense line 16204.01.56 building CE Fountain Square by $155 for unanticipating electrical costs. But whereas budget amendment, the general fund increasing expense line 16204.01.062 building CE maintenance by $2,000 and decrease expense line 16202.01.055 buildings equipment public access by $2,000 for unanticipated maintenance costs. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 16204.01.0 074 Central Storeroom CE supplies by $500 and decrease expense line 16204.01.064 Building CE mowing by $60 and decrease expense line 16204.01.126 Building CE vintage light for unanticipated costs. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense line 13554.01.044 Assessor CE Sutiores by $2,000 and decrease expense line 13554.01.040 Assessor CE account support by $115.02 and decrease expense line 13554.01.048 Assessor CE conferences by $165 and decrease expense line 13554.01.063 assessor CE mileage by $249.11 decrease expense line 14701.01 ethics board CE by $200 decrease expense line 85104.01 community beautification by 90109 and decrease expense line 71454.1.31 Intercommunity Rec CE Transportation by $369.78 to cover in unanticipated certiori's fees. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund, increasing expense line 14204.01 Attorney CE by $14,957.71, decreasing expense line 14204.01123, attorney CE codification by $1,093.21, decreasing expense line 16204.01.059, building CE heat by $10,164.50, decreasing expense line 90608.01.037 medical insurance town deductible by $2,000 decreasing expense line 19004.57 special items CE grant administrator by $800 and decreasing expense line 
1.42 door control CE strays by $500 and decreasing expense line 35104.01.81 door control veterinarian by $400 for unanticipated attorney expenses. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increasing expense 80204.01 planning CE land use attorney by $1,500 and decreasing expense line 71404.01.089 Amenia Park CE Ballpark by $1,500 for unanticipated land use attorney expenses. Whereas budget amendment in the highway fund, increasing expense line 90608.03 Medical Insurance Highway by $133.80 and decreasing expense line 90608.03.37 medical insurance town deductible by $133.80 for unanticipated medical costs. Whereas budget amendment in the highway fund increasing expense line 908, 90108.03 state retirement by $2,116.89 and decreasing expense line 90608.0337 medical insurance town deductible for $2,116.89 for unanticipated, retire unanticipated retirement costs. Be it further resolved that the town board authorize the bookkeeper to encumber all claims against the town that are received between December 15th, and that would be 2017, and December 31st, 2017. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board authors, authorizes a transfer of necessary budget lines to process the transactions. I make that motion. A second. Discussion? Yes. Um, the vital stats PS 500 from the town clerk account support. What was that for? Me. Um, so I get reimbursed at $10 per transaction, and to date we're at 19 deaths. So with their requests, it went over the $1,500. So we're just taking it out of one line to cross it over the other. <coughs> and also this year, one of the catches that they found is they had to take that out of a CE line. And since I'm an employee, it's supposed to be a personal services line. So we had to create the personal services line to make the comptroller happy. So Marge had to do some shifting money to meet the needs of a personal service. The eighth whereas clause, um, dance supplies by 950 increasing. Mm -hmm. Then it says increasing revenue line uh, 750. Wouldn't that be decreasing it? No, you increase it. You'll be increasing it? Mm hmm We got a grant from Arts Mid Hudson, which needs to increase the revenue to reflect that, and you need to increase it also into the supplies line. Okay. So that we show that we spend it out, and it came in, and it got spent okay. out. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's recording the grant. Okay. I have a question as well. Um, it actually had to do with the electrical, which I see was higher than we expected. And I assume when I was going through the vouchers, there were a lot of R and R ballast in building department office, R and R three flood lamps. I'm wondering if these ballast changes are to LED. Is are you slowly ticking away, changing we, we out have, to LED so that we have um, savings? We have some we have ballast here that um, we already have here. We're using up the ones we have. Uh-huh, and, and I saw you ordered 10 more that he didn't have in stock um, at any rate. Yeah, so, so the one, idea and once that they is get used, we'll be switching those rooms over. You know, the next time a ballast goes and the ballasts have been all used up, then we'll, we'll be switching over to LED. Okay, because I saw one of the things said R&R, three high flood lamp back of buildings to LED. So the back of the building is now switched to LED? Yeah, what happened with the, uh, with the building, we had several complaints that um, when people Kids were leaving at night, they oh. couldn't see going down the stairs. Okay. And the two lights that were there, they were very old mm -hmm. and they were, a type of fluorescent light that cost a fortune to maintain and um, get the bulbs for, so we switched them over to LED. 
going forward, it would cost less money for the electrical. This may be hard to answer at this moment, but if you do have the answer, it would be helpful. Why is there an administrative fee for NBP Select Care? They charged $10 for general and $30 for highway. Do you have any idea why they tack that on? It's not a huge amount of money. I just thought it was interesting that it's part of their contract. They actually mandate that they have to do. Okay. Yeah, you have you have to um, agree to that in order to to get the medical insurance. Okay. It's one of their fees. All right. Um, building inspectors, computer, I understand it was out of warranty, needed to be redone, and the computer and the monitor were 1,000, which we had budgeted appropriately, but it looks like we went over by approximately 500. Mm -hmm. And I saw in the voucher that the, our BAS system, which we pay for, charges us for miles and setup and labor, $500, so it's a $1,500 computer and monitor instead. Do they always charge us to set up a new computer? Yes, um, this one was particularly, um, this Difficult. particular yeah. computer housed all the uh, building software. Okay. I just I building didn't know and planning. that it inflates our costs so much, and mm -hmm. if it wasn't complicated, it seems like it. So they needed to do that in particular. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, they get the computers through state bid. The okay. Dell. Yeah, yeah. So the $1,000 And makes then sense. they came and um, made sure, you know, all the software was downloaded appropriately and everything was working. Okay. So thank you very much. But that, that was the oldest computer in the building. And just to clarify what all this is, is at the, when, when funds are set aside in the budget and then it gets to the end of the year and we realize we have gone over on certain lines, but still have money in others, Victoria's uh, responsibility is then to shift those funds around from line to line where there's extra money to where it's needed so that the budget all balances out. Yes, because actually when you're, when you're doing the budget, you're doing your best yes. guesstimate for it. So, I mean, a lot of these lines are with a few exceptions, there are only a few hundred dollars one way or the other. Okay. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilman Morris? Yes. <laughs> Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Okay, we have... Um, the Planning Board Consultants 2018 contracts. These are uh, the current consultants are um, Rody Soika and Andrews is, are the consulting engineers. Whitman, Osterman and Hannah um, are the Planning Board attorney. Oops, I think we have George Lithgow. And we have um, Marianne Johnson, who um, does planning and has worked with them for many years. And George Janes uh, does the visual, is a visual consultant. Mm -hmm. And we are currently using George Lithgow for Zoning Board of Appeals for Kent Hollow. So I also had a 2018 contract. Um, Whitman and Hannah have not changed their rates. Who has not? I, I don't think. Uh, Anyone well, else? none of none of them have changed their rates from last year. Okay. Do we need to vote on them all separately, or does everybody feel comfortable with our same slate of consultants? Well, I think you can name them in the... Each one. Well, you, you don't have to do each motion separately. You can just okay, name I'll, who they are. I'll make a motion that we accept uh, the contract as proposed from Roy, Soika, and Andrews for 2018. Mary Ann Johnson, our... Uh, 
planner uh, for 2018. At the do, do I need to say the rates? Same. So 160, same rate, which is same 165 rate. an hour at $85 per hour. Roads and Soika is. They have a whole bill. They have a fee schedule. Yeah. Per fee schedule. Per fee schedule as attached with the principal engineer at $150 per hour. And George Janes and Associates, our visual consultant. I don't have his. At a rate of 175 per hour, and um, Associates as uh, specified. Um, we would David Everett at Whiteman, Osterman, and Hanna for 2018 for. 225 an hour. It's the same as it has been. He hasn't he didn't change it. 225 an hour. And George Lithko, ZBA special uh, attorney for Kent Hollow Mine. At 225. At 225, which is the same amount they have been paying. Uh, Jacobowitz and Gubitz. That's George Lithko. That's them. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, what about our um, Ray, the wire, the cell tower specialist? Um, the radio frequency. We we, we hadn't heard back from him. I mean, we can, you know, get a contract as we need him. Okay. Because we only use him as a as needed basis anyway. Right. He's very good. Second. Councilman Morris. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prody? Yes. AK Municipal Accountant. Um, I talked to, um, I have two proposals one for Torsha, uh, Sickler, Torsha, and Allen, and Churchill, who are also the um, accountants for the town of Northeast and RBT, who we've been using for several years. Um, I um, did um, talk to them. I wasn't happy about the, their delay in doing the cash audit and doing, um, doing and s separating them out, which they um, are going to change. Um, they've been doing a very good job with our annual financial audit. Um, annual um, financial um, that has the records that have to go to the controller's office. Um, in fact, they work closely with Marge, so she knows how to get all the information together, so they just have to put it together and go ahead and send it in into place. So when I um, talked to Marge, she's very comfortable working with them, and and I don't think there was much difference in per hour between the two companies. No, I would stick with them if the second quote is is a little higher. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept um, or renew, you know, the, uh, accept the contract from RBT with um, Linda Hannigan, the partner, at 190 an hour, staff Denise Williamson, CPA at 140 an hour, and the staff account at $100 an hour. And the AUD end of the year report preparation for the Comptroller's Office at $9,000. Second. And we mostly use Denise, right? I yeah. saw her name mostly on those bills. Council Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. And then we have the um, SPCA contract that we um, renew every year.
We haven't had to um, use them this year, but they are there in case we do. So this, I know that there are stipulations that go with where we are able to board the dogs, right? They have to be follow the ag and markets. Yes. And our current um, dog control person has all the ag, ag and markets approved kennels. He has them in inspected once a year at his business. So why are we doing the SPCA as a backup yes. plan? So normally the dogs would go to our dog controllers. Right. Kennel. And I mean, we on yeah, but he's not going to. Yes. OK. Because it seems a little high and it's a long way, obviously, to Hyde Park. Right. OK. Wait, I'm sorry. This is. What is this for? A contract making sure that we have kennels available for stray dogs that need to be impounded. Back up to the. This is a backup contract to. Well, our dog control officer has apparently approved kennels that meet the specifications. But this would be a, a, a backup plan. We would have a contractual relationship with SPCA that we can use their facilities and they if would, needed. Yeah. If needed. We don't have to. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And these costs fall on the um, dog owner. On if the you dog you owner. If we find them owner. and when they go to get adopted, they pay for those fees. And um, I will say that we once in the last five years, we did try not using the SPCA, and that was a terrible year. Right. We need to have this the as SPCA a backup. The SPCA has a great working relationship with specifically the town clerk's office. When there's ever been issues, they contact us. They ensure that they get properly licensed if they're going to switch ownership. Um, they are open 24-7, so if the right. dog officer gets a complaint and has to pick up a dog, he brings them there that night if we can't you know, track down the owners in a timely manner. Right. And I think if he goes on vacation and we can't reach him, we, we have a place them. to put the dog mm -hmm. that meets all the requirements. I mean, last year we didn't use them, but they, it's, we need to, you know, it's good to have them there. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion that we accept the contract for the SPCA to provide kennels for um, dogs that need to be impounded. At forty-five dollars a day, with shots and things as specified. Second. Council Morris. Yes. Council Gutierrez. Yes. Councilwoman Doyle. Yes. Supervisor Party. Yeah, it's back. <laughs> okay, a town <laughs> attorney. Very good. Um, we have been using. Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah. And we've been paying a lot of um, travel fees and other fees because they have to come from Albany. And also, we also have a contract here from um, Scott Volkman, who we've already interviewed and who does our cert cases. So I would like to have him be our town attorney since he's pretty local. He's been with the um, with uh, town of Pleasant Valley for many years as their uh, municipal town attorney. So, uh White Osterman Hannah was charging us 50% of hourly for travel. Yes. And. And. And a lot. Well, I sent you copies of some of the bills. Yeah, it was. Uh, Cause he, they. Um, Scott, would, it would be $200 an hour and no travel. And he's local, he's right, right in Poughkeepsie. And he's all, uh, already doing the, um, the cert cases. And um, I also have a contract um, from him for the cert cases to continue in um, 2018. 
Uh, Scott is not going to uh, charge travel time? I didn't, no, there's no travel in, his, in the contract. I'm just trying to remember when we interviewed him whether he said that he charged for it or not. I don't recall. I don't remember. Well, there's a schedule of his charges. There's no travel. That firm is pretty, is full service. Okay, it's at the end there, huh? Isn't Janice going to do some, like the sound um, ordinance, the noise ordinance? Wasn't she well, supposed she's, to provide that to <clears throat> us? Yeah, I, um, we're going to, I think we'll, it would be best to just um, let Genevieve finish everything I she's think working. So, because no, because we're not going to start over is going to be even more costly. No, this would be just until just starting in January for new you know things. our town board meetings for anything new. I see. We let Jen finish, but not travel here and right. Attend. She can just finish up the noise and um, the uh, water finish up finish or... up uh, Ridgecrest. Um, finish up the MTA easement agreement was uh, were some of the things she was working on. You know, to just finish what she's doing mm -hmm. without coming here. Yep. Should we vote first before we delegate? Well, I okay. just wanted to know how this would impact us because we had Denise doing the <laughs> noise ordinance. We had Jen do the noise ordinance and now we'd have Scott Volkman no, no, no. doing research. No, for he's Scott. not going to do right. it. Okay, that's no. fine. No, it just made more sense to me that whatever she's currently working on just to finish. Yeah, that makes sense. And then just to have Scott for starting in January for anything new and yes. and to be our town attorney for, you know, for the board. I, I have no objections. I have a lot of respect for Boyd Osterman and Hannah. Uh, but when we discussed this last, I was not thrilled about paying for travel from Albany twice a month, so um, I'm good to vote. Yeah, and if he can gang up, you know, his work mm -hmm. here, that makes more sense. I'll make a motion that we hire Scott Volkman from Stanger, Roberts, Davis, and Diamond of, Pokip of, of Wappingers Falls and Poughkeepsie for $200 an hour to be the town board attorney. Second. And to renew his contract for the sartorial work. Right. Right, okay. Second. Yes. Councilman Morris, Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilwoman Doyle. Yes. And Supervisor Prodi. Okay, um, discussion. I wanted um, to talk about um, increasing the building use rate from $25 to $50 starting in January. Yep, we have discussed this in the past. We, uh, at the time, I believe this was before Jim was on the board, I think the consensus on the board was that it was a good idea. Uh, if we especially are now uh, paying for maintenance, um, as opposed to having someone on staff, uh, I think it's it's merited. You mean for custodial work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. So those using the buildings aren't really cleaning up after themselves. We're having to do the janitorial work thereafter. Well, the um, the farmers market does you know does uh, you know we still have to have someone come in. Oh, I see. Every every week to, to clean the place from to open it. And I mean, it's, uh, we're going to, as far as, um, you know, opening the building and closing the building, I mean, we're going to be using the constables to make sure the building is secure, which is what we did for the, um, for the dance recital. 
And the other thing is we tend to waive the building fee pretty frequently we for yeah. for activities that are not here to generate a profit or to do business. So, you know, we keep it for people who are here to transact. I think that that's fair. Or people who are collecting fees from whoever they're <coughs> working with. Um, this may be related, may not be, but uh, Don Marie and I discussed um, the uh, possibility of adding a gate that would swing open, just a simple wrought iron um, security gate that would be able to allow people to use the auditor the um, gym without having um, if you opened up the building to say Access the farmers the market. The they wouldn't be in using the getting in on the elevator and going up and down and circulating mm -hmm. throughout the building and losing track of them. So I think that we should have a lock and a gate that would prevent them. Do they have access to the bathrooms though? They wouldn't. There's an operating bathroom down there that down in the and the custodian who's here on Friday cleans it. Okay, so they have access to a bathroom. They have access to running water. Mm -hmm. um, let them be separated from that so when they use the building use they just they're renting just that and they don't have access to the rest of the building the other thing is that the auditorium is going to need something of that same treatment treatment so that when the um, dance program goes on they don't have full access when the bathrooms get fixed in the back of that auditorium they should be sealed off as well so that they aren't running all over the building getting into mm -hmm. things that we don't so anyway, I would be, I guess, for increasing the fees, but at the same time, putting in more um, security measures so that it doesn't cost us an arm and a leg in constable fees to have, you know, people monitoring this entire building mm -hmm. for one isolated activity. It doesn't seem cost effective. Well, he won't be here the whole time. He just comes at the end and makes sure it's secure. I mean, he did for the dance recital because there were people in and out. <clears throat> I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, you could put a keypad lock on there that has temporary codes. It gets mm -hmm. updated wirelessly. I mean, that's not an expensive I wouldn't investment. think. Okay. Right. Okay. Somebody's going to have to manage it, though. But Easier than managing the kids running all over the place. Sure. All right. Okay. So we do make we a motion? Make a motion to increase the building use rate from $25 to $50, effective 1 4 2008. Second. 2018. 2008. Okay. <laughs> Goodness, we're going back. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be in this year. <laughs> Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Ferrody? Yes. I have a letter from Weebita School asking to um, use Town of Amenia baseball fields at Beekman Park for their baseball program um, starting the first week in April with their last game played on May 25th. We are proposing our facility staff will again take responsibility to line the fields with, with the town cutting the grass. Um, they did supply clay last year. It's nice. And we're very good about, you know, lining the fields. So is that okay with everybody? <clears throat> Make a motion that we approve the use of the ball fields by the Weebatuck Central School District um, during the uh, first week of April through May 25th. Second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prody. Yes. Okay, I have a um, request for internship from Thomas Ford. He wanted to know if um, if we can guarantee a business internship in the town hall this coming summer. He's willing to volunteer his time and work a winter internship without college credit for resume building work experience.
because he originally came and talked to me um, about <clears throat> working this winter, but apparently um, he wouldn't be able to work to a winter internship for college credit. So he was wondering if um, he would be able to do a summer business internship. So what did you propose? Um, as a, is he interested in the recreation activities or in business in general? Just business in general, working in the town hall. And uh, we have the capacity to oversee his Yes. A system. I'll make a motion that we um, offer Thomas Ford an internship at the town hall for this coming summer. Second. Discussion. Go ahead. Um, this might only apply to private business, but uh, I think you have to pay interns. If they are taking away uh, paid work by someone else. So if wow. there is work that you normally do that is paid and now you're going to replace them with a volunteer, that isn't legal to my understanding. But if you have a new extracurricular activity, let's say our sports teams need some help uh, collecting the fees and turning them in and reconciling the budget and reporting to Victoria, something that is that an extra perfect. activity <laughs> that in fact isn't currently a paid position here, that we're okay. I don't know about municipalities in particular, but in the private industry, we work that carefully and make sure that we're not replacing a paid job with a volunteer. Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure. I think we can vote, right? Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Supervisor Prody? Yes. And I have no other matters. Public comment? No one's here. <laughs> Town board comments? <laughs> Moving right along? <laughs> uh, sh I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and thank my colleagues on the board for a wonderful year. Yes. I would also like to thank Mike. Uh, for serving and volunteering. I know he's not here, but this is his last meeting. And uh, he was very gracious to me. I learned a lot from Mike. I wish him the best of luck. And uh, here's to 2018. Yay. Okay. I'll say that I really appreciated Mike Flint. Uh, vol uh, um, giving us some help on uh, the dance recital. The, the musical theater arts program was very good this year. He helped us with the sound system, understanding what our needs were, and advertised it for us and, and videotaped it. And as far as I know, it will be shown. Maybe it's playing now. When, when can people see it? It's starting tomorrow on Mike, would you Friday. be able to come to the podium to... <laughs> no, so it'll be ch on Channel 22. He runs it regularly, as I understand, and it's delightful. It's got a lot of holiday favorites. Um, you'll recognize some of the scenes from uh, movies like um, Anastasia. I don't know enough about this. Frozen. Polar Express, Frozen, Frozen Grinch, The Grinch, yeah. the and the play Elf. And the Chipmunks. And, and the, the Chipmunks, chipmunks. Alvin Ailey, chipmunks. if you want to hear an amazing <laughs> rendition of... Um, they were so cute. Of whatever it is, Alvin Ailey's Chipmunk a song. Yeah. It's very cute. And that was, in fact, put together in two weeks. This is a good example of Heather's skills. The instructor is Heather Hollihan Guarneri. And she had a uh, problem that she said to me two weeks before the show was on that um, they had a they needed to buy some time because the kids had a lot of makeup on and clothing changes, so they mm -hmm. had to um, think of another act to slide in there. So there were siblings out in the audience that they recruited to do the chipmunk song. <laughs> and they actually brought down the house in oh, their two-week <laughs> lesson of how to do a shuffle ball change tap dance and sang to the chipmunks, and they had great 
um, costumes made very inexpensively by um, parents, and um, one of those parents in particular did ears um, for all the kids and um, by hand in this little nine quick two week turnover. So a lot of stress, a lot of enthusiasm, and a lot of excitement. And I really appreciated the audiences that came out and gave the kids um, a, a, a very nice, um, rewarding experience to be on the stage and showing off their skills. They were really quite talented. These kids really surprised, I'm sure, even their parents. The parents were thrilled. The instructor was thrilled. You should have seen the, her face as the chipmunks performed. It was very cute. So um, mm -hmm. I think next year um, even more people could come out and see it and uh, support our talented youth. We had about um, 25 to 30 kids. I didn't actually do a final count. Um, 20 kids regularly showing up every Saturday from September 15th until December uh, 10th, mm -hmm. uh, practicing and getting ready for this performance. So I really appreciate all the dedication and hard work of the kids to make this happen. And the people who stepped up to do the spotlight, Dave Reagan uh, spent a lot of time here Friday, Saturday, Sunday learning how to do the spotlight appropriately for these kids. And I had... Um, uh, Roy Nathan's son, um, oh, what is his name? Lucian Alexander Roy did the sound system, managed it. I was in a panic on Wednesday night. We didn't have a sound system operator or a sound system, and Ballantyne gave us all the things we needed, and Lucian stepped up to the plate and was here for all the performances and the, and the rehearsals. So thank you, Lucian. Thank you, Dave. Thank you all the parents who made the props and the costumes and made it all happen. Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, your story reminded me that last year I promised I would bring my accordion oh, and gosh. we would all sing. <laughs> that could have been the break. You're lucky I didn't think of that. But uh, we'll the have chipmunks. to do that. We'll I'm sorry, the chipmunks. Year. Michelle will be here. She'll help us. <laughs> do a Jim. You didn't know what, what you were getting into. Did no, you? I didn't. <laughs> yes, it's required next year that the town board members each bring one talent to the show, right? Yeah. I may do my Frank Sinatra impersonations. We'll see. Uh -huh. oh, that sounds we're looking great. forward to that. Yeah. All right, we need a little Frank Sinatra. Absolutely. That's in the minutes. I wish. <laughs> right. Strike the May part. He will do. He will do. <laughs> That's great. Are there any other town board comments? Nope. Motion to adjourn. I will make that motion. And if you've made it, I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> He's seconding. Okay. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Aye.